In this video, you will learn what a tomographic projection looks like from an analytical point of view. But to do so, we need to look at the radon transform. Let's consider a certain two-dimensional object, defined by the function f, on a certain Cartesian coordinate system. Then define a line in this system that holds the detector array for a certain projection direction theta. And on this line, we measure what is called the detector function p. Finally, we define an x-ray as a line l through the object function, parameterized by theta, the angle between the ray and the y-axis, and by t, the position where this x-ray intersects with the detector line. This line is then basically a collection of all the points in the coordinate system for which x times the cosine of theta plus y times the sine of theta equals to t. Now at this point we finally have all that we need to define the measured linear projection data of the function f under the angle theta and detector position t. This is of course the integral of f along the line l. If we do this for all projection angles and all positions on the detector line, so this basically means that we're rotating the detector line around the object function, constantly building a detector function each time. Then we end up with a transformation function called the radon transform. And if you consider the output of this transform in a coordinate system on theta and t, then you get a full representation of the object function in what is called the projection domain. This is also called the sinogram of the function. Now the reason why it is called sinogram has nothing at all to do with China, but instead comes from the fact that if you apply the radon transform on a direct delta function, that is an object function representing a single dot in the coordinate system, then you end up with a sine wave in the projection coordinate system. Now important to note here is that the radon transform is in fact a linear operator. And given the fact that each possible object function can be expressed as a linear combination of endless direct delta function, we can thus say that the projection of any object is basically the sum of a number of sine waves. Now so far we have considered the projection as a continuous function over theta and t. While this is nice in theory, of course, for practical purposes, one or two changes have to be made. And this will result in a discretized version of the radon transform. Firstly, we'll have to take into account that we can't measure an infinite amount of different projection directions. Typically, we're limited to only a few hundred. At fewer angles, of course, mean faster scans and lower radiation dose, but also an increasingly incomplete sampling of the projection domain. Secondly, we must note that detectors have a finite width, and what happens in practice is actually that one detector pixel will measure data from all X-rays that end up in that detector bin. So in the end, we end up with the following discretization of the radon transform. The index i refers to a pixel on the sinogram image and corresponds to a single value for theta and t.